All right. Um, Jane, I think you you should just um share the way you were sharing. If there's, if there's um, if there's an issue, just share the way you shared it there. Hi, right, Jane, please, are you there? All right, um, I, I can't. Yes, not I'm with you. I'm about to share it now. Please, one moment. All right, so. All right, thank you. So Eves and Tech is a platform that was dedicated to closing the gender gap between women and technology. And these are the courses that we offer at the moment. These are the courses that we offer at the moment. So our founder started the, the company because she noticed that a lot of women want to do more than what they currently do. And, um, but that's why I feel like they want to do more than what they, cur they currently do. They still want something that will still accommodate all the things that they ought to do. And that was how she started Use and Tech. And gratefully, Use and Tech has been able to do a lot of um, um, good in the last um, three years of, um, of being in business. We've trained lots of women and many of them have gotten jobs. And this is this is evident in our testimonials and in our referrals. Our, our students always refer their friends to us because they know that, oh, if you get used and tech, this is what you're going to get, this is what you're going to get. And that's something that we pride ourselves in. So we've always been looking out for courses that are in demand and that are also important um, that women can take and that men can as well take. And that is why we are also looking into this new course, which is motion design. We, we've had quite a number of people ask about the course in time past, and we thought is, is a good time to start the course. And um, this is why we decided to look for an industry expert who, who knows his onions and will be really interested in imparting, in imparting knowledge. So please, Jane, kindly scroll to the to the facilitator's corner so that I can introduce him and he can start. We've taken too much of his time already. Yes, please move down a little, a little more. All right, so Mr. Michael is a highly skilled motion graphics designer with a rich background in visual design, boasting seven years of experience. He has spent five of those years specifically focused on motion design, excelling in both 2D and 3D animation. His expertise lies in utilizing popular tools such as After Effects, Cinema 4D, Figma, and Photoshop. Additionally, Michael has proficiency in web development, user experience, design, interactions, and corporate branding and he works at InterSwitch. So please make welcome Mr. Michael to the floor as it takes us through the, the theme of today, unlocking the opportunities in the world of motion design. Mr. Michael, you're welcome. Please unmute and let us see you. And as well, please share your screen. Jane, please make Mr. Michael the, the host. Please make him the host, and then you can. Please make him the host so you can share his screen. Hi everyone. 
I'm trying to see if I've been made the host. Um, Okay. Give me a second. Um, when I try to share my screen. It's, it's saying I have to leave and rejoin. I'm trying to share from work. Let me see if it goes. All right. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Um, can you all hear me? I need to be sure that you guys can hear me. Yes, we can. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Can hear you. Right. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, sir. All right, great. Hi, everyone. Um, it's nice to be here. Thank you all for joining. Um. I will try not to, because a lot of time has been spent already. I'll try not to waste too much of everyone's time. Um, so the theme or the topic for this um, webinar, this talk is unlocking the world of uh, motion design opportunities. And generally my goal is one, to get you interested in motion design um help you see how easy it is you know to get into the motion design world uh to also show you some of the opportunities some of the prospects some of the um um what's the word some of the areas that you probably would have not seen before concerning motion design and all in all to convince you that you know you should consider a career you know in motion design so i hope everyone is everyone is um settled in and we are good to go yes sir <laughs> right. yes sir. i'll start with an introduction to motion design Motion design basically is the is the art of bringing, you know, to life static graphics. Yeah. Um. Every 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 day we would come across thousands, you know, maybe even millions, uh, of graphically designed things from billboards to posters to flyers you know, to social media posts, to um, what you will see on TV. So there's a lot of graphics going around. So motion design is basically that same graphics, but animated. Yeah, that's literally what it is. But the only major difference now is it now has more story. It now has more, 
you know, life to it. So motion design is simply that art of, or the job of a motion designer is someone who, you know, sits down, converts a static design and, you know, into an animation. That's the basic job of a motion designer. Um, in today's world, several, um, several people or like so many people have discovered that they have like this short attention span. Um, you just see something and you remove your eyes and you will not even remember it. You know, that people that go through TikToks every day and they see lots and lots and lots of posts. But if you ask them what they what they saw two or three scrolls back, they most likely would not, you know, remember it. So um motion design helps you grab people's attention you know there could be you could see 50 um static billboards but when you see one 3d billboard that will probably capture your attention you know when you see one animated billboard of things flying around and moving around and stuff that might have you know people have discovered that, that has a more much more lingering effect on human mind than static design so motion design is very very important everywhere you know all the companies all the brands all any any company you can mention you know uses some sort of motion design from healthcare to travel to um you know fintech all forms of education require motion design so even if you want to get into the world of ai augmented reality you know it's easier for someone who has um you know experience in motion design and um 3d a bit to be able to enter into any of those new areas if you want to even announce the new features that your ai can do you still have to do it with motion design so motion design is very important you know um part of the thing i also want to say is that it's it's an important the reason why it is important is you know it's a tool for storytelling many people can use it to um evoke certain emotions you know i don't know that there, there, there's some of these ads that we see on you know um there, there are so many stories that you could use by the time you make ads like really sad music at the time you now start um um showing certain things in your animation you could very well um evoke a certain emotion for people so over in the US, there's some jobs I've worked on where, you know, you could, like, for example, if you're a motion designer for a US based company and they are trying to do all this politics, you know, you could create animations showing people rushing the border and showing that this person, wherever it is that, you know, that paid you for the job, can say, um, I will protect your borders, I will do this, I will do this. There's a way you can tell that whole story that people would be like, oh, nice. You know, just by sitting down in front of your computer, you don't even need to, you don't need to step out, you don't need to go anywhere. You can sit in your house and create motion design. So, um, all in all, uh, motion design is very important. Even the new iPhones that come out, there's a way they would advertise it, or a new iTel, or if you're on TikTok, if you see, um. You know the new camera we've uh, we've updated the chip we've done this we've added three cameras inside all those things they are all motion design they are used to tell a story make people feel you know unique and like they are buying a specific you know, all they are buying is a, is a mobile phone um so um we have to talk about the technical aspect of motion design um how would you learn motion design if you are if you are to venture into that industry so um so the tools i use to learn motion design are adobe after effects um a software called premiere pro um i also use a tool called photoshop a lot of people should know that too um then over time there are some other tools that you could also know but they are not necessary. The two most important tools that you should you should know for um you know for motion design is 
After Effects and at least a design tool. So Photoshop or Figma. The idea for motion design basically, or they call it motion graphics design, is to bring to life static design. So you need a tool that creates those static designs. Mm -hmm. So that could be your Photoshop, your Illustrator, or your Figma. Yeah, that could be any of these tools that creates static design. Even Blender and Cinema 4D can be used to create certain types of static design. But After Effects is a tool we now use to animate those static designs. Um, so if I were to start in the, if I was to start in the, um, you know, line of trying to create motion design again from scratch, um, I would, I would start with learning how to use a design tool. So I will learn how to use Photoshop. Um, or if you are someone already knows how to use Photoshop, you are in luck because you've, you've already. You, you're already 50% there, if not 60%. Yeah, if you already know how to use Illustrator, you know how to use Figma, you're already a good um, way there. You just need to like add After Effects at this point. Now, if you already know how to use After Effects, there's now that need to move into learning 3D tools as well because it's also a major part of, um, of motion design. You cannot, you cannot, as much as you like to, you cannot, you know, the, the earlier you get into those areas, the better for you. Because your brain starts to, you know, um, take it in. Like, imagine you learned how to play the piano at a very young age. Before you get, like, 15, 20, you automatically already know all the, around the piano. So, the earlier you learn any of these tools, the better. Um, but this is a typical learning design to learn emotion to and you know learn it really so um so we would want to go into a demo session, yeah, where I will um you know explain how I would normally take on a motion design project. Um, I need, I need, there's a second account I have here. I want to make that account um, the host so that I can go ahead and share my screen through that, that account. But I need, is everybody, does, it, does anybody have any questions or issues so far while I figure that out? I need responses. Does anybody have any questions or um All right. Um, let me check the chance. Okay. So I need to know if you guys can see my screen. I just uh, moved to the second screen. Yes, you can. I go wait. Hello. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. We can see it. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Um. So this, according to how I explained, is a typical design tool, which is Photoshop. 
what you have here is something similar to you could create something like this depending on how good you are you could create something like this in um photoshop um in figma you could also create something like this in illustrator you know you could if you have no experience in designing you could also ask a friend to create something like this for you yeah so all in all i typically say to everyone who you know studies or works with me you have to create a design first if the design does not look good the static design if it doesn't look good the animation will not look good so here we have um a random post a random uh, listen i attended emotion design webinar at hills and tech so um there are a couple of things here they are set up today michael um, here's that tech so this is this is what you typically would start with as a motion designer you probably would work with your um let's say you're 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 working on a team with other brand guys or other ui ux designers they would be the ones to provide you you know a design like this that's if you are unable to design it yourself you can always get them to design something for you so this is what you begin with this this image right here this face is editable you can you can move it around um all this text here are editable as well you can you can change that so basically this this static design is similar to any static design you use on the internet. You could, if you have the um, source file, you could typically um, get a design like this, just static. It looks good. And so many of these designs that people put out there look good. But try to think about it. It would be more captivating if it was animated. So what I'm going to do is show i don't know how much time um you all have i'll try not to be as boring or i'll try not to take too much time but um i'll try to show you what the process is like for a motion designer who has received you know a design so I'm going to, after designing this, after whatever I do to this, I'm going to save it. So let's say I save it as um, design sample. Design sample, yeah. I've already saved it before. So I would open my After Effects, which is, which is this tool. Let me just which is this tool after effects. So I open it and um I'm just going to start off a new project. This is what you typically would start with as a motion person. I'm going to import the design that I just did so and I'm going to open it here to um, I shot you need to mute your mic. All right. Um, so if I double click what I brought in, this, this is it. This is the, this is the same design that I had here. Um, all split into groups and all that same design is what I now have here in, um, in After Effects. So I'm going to open one that I had already prepared. 
But if at any point you do not understand what I'm saying, just let me know. So, um, yeah. So everything, one layer after the other. This is the background. If I turn it off, to go off the background in the back, same thing. I can turn it off and on. Um, I think I should just make this thing come to the side. Yeah. So it's easy for you to see what's going on. All right. So these layers they control the animation that is here. So the dots around the screen, there's a layer for it. Everything. So imagine what you have in Figma, for example, how they are all split into layers. When you import it from after from Figma to After Effects, they will all be split into layers. Photoshop, Illustrator, everything will be split into layers. So it's already making it easy for you to, you know, work. So uh starting off with the this lady's um face. So this layer nine face, I just want to animate that in. So um in in After Effects or in motion design, there are a couple of basic things that you normally do to animate. So you could either um they are all called transform properties. So you could either change the position of something over time, therefore create an animation. You could scale the size of something over time, therefore create an animation as well. You could also rotate that object or you could change its transparency. Sometimes it's possible that people mix in all of that together. Like they would, they would mix in the position and the scale and the rotation and everything and create a new animation. So right now, all we want to do is um, allow this scale from being small to being big. So if I come here, this is face, this is this layer face. I will just click scale. Um, over a period of two seconds. I don't know if you guys can see the, the time at the top here. Just two seconds. I'll just keep my mouse here and I would create another keyframe. So there are two keyframes created. Um, the first, they are both at 100%, yeah? So the first one, I'm going to reduce that first one to zero and the second one is still at 100%. So if I should press the play button, this play button here, that um, face comes up from being small to being big, yeah? So now, if that is too slow for me, I could make that a lot faster. I could, you know, allow that to happen less than a second. It should go from being small to big like this very quickly. Um, I could then give it a secondary effect, which is a bounce effect. There are some tools for that. In this case, there's a tool called motion tools. Um, I could just give it a this elastic effect right here. So once I press play, it, it comes out and has like a, a pushback. I could also make the timing less. So if I if I press play, it comes out. So you you notice how it come out and bounce back in, yeah. So that's that's just from two keyframes, right? So the next thing I want to do is the I attended a motion design webinar here on Tech. So that is currently here. I attended this layer motion design webinar, this layer, and heels and tech, this layer. So I could I could use um, shift the shift button to select all three of them and animate all three at the same time. So 
For this one, I want all the text to come from the bottom part of the screen upwards. Yeah, from the bottom part of the screen upwards. So I'm going to press P. P is the short key for position. So I'm going to press P and then by clicking this button right here, I'll create one keyframe. So I'll click that button. I can go to like two seconds here and click this second keyframe, this keyframe button here, click it and I've created the second keyframe. So my animation is simply allow this thing to start from the bottom and end at the top. So currently they are both at the, at the top. So I just need to drag this down and the rest of the text goes down. Yeah. Currently it seems like it is going to create some sort of visibility problem. So I want it to disappear. In After Effects that disappears called opacity or transparency or translucency. So if I press the keyword T, opacity would show up. I'll create a keyframe for opacity as well. Go to like one second and create a second keyframe. Both keyframes are showing at 100%. So I want one to show at zero and the other one to be at 100. So now I have keyframes on position and opacity. So if I play it, you should have something that looks like this. They will come from not being visible to being visible. Yeah. Um. In I won't want to bother you with this, but in After Effects, there's something called easing. Yeah. Easing is basically um saying something should speed up or slow down. So for every for the position, I'm going to um ease the position. So the the tool I normally use is this motion tools again. And I'll just click this tool here and here. So if I press play, it should it should all come out like this. So normally I could space this thing out, space this text out. So they come out one after the other. So they all come out together. So I select the three of them and I'll click this motion tools button again to space them out, you know? Um, if I play that, it should give me this animation of them coming out one after the other. So basically all, all we're doing in motion design is take a static post and animate key features. That is the, um, the position, the rotation, the transparency. And the last one is I think scale. So if you see, um, give me a second. Let me. I've done a version of this as part of a training program. So I just, I'm not going to. So I've done a version of this before where I did everything. So you would see this positioning for the face there, um, the text to where I move the text in, one after the other, then the, the, the things at the bottom of the screen can also be animated. So this VFX, all of that. So a combination of, you know, this, that scale, the first thing that happens there is scale. Second thing that happens there is um, position, you know, a combination of all those things coupled with, yes, confetti and some other things can create a full motion graphics like this. So I do not want to like take so much of everyone's time because this is something that, you know, is not, is by the time I start like getting technical and I start explaining masking and, you know, um, loop, looping um what's the word looping expressions it might get a bit too technical 
I don't everybody understand, but the basics of let me let me do this last part. The basics of um bottom text. Um let me just let me just add this last. Okay. The basic of this whole thing is animation is simple. It is just if you know the transform tools and you know how to um you know play with keyframes and stuff you don't might not even need to know it too in depth the fact that the design is already beautiful yeah is enough for some people the fact that it is moving is enough for some other people you know some people are just happy to see animation move um so this this is the last part I will just explain before we end this demo session. So I'm just going to, I've done the first one, the second one. Yeah, I'm just going to allow things like this. This one I wrote number one. I want it to move from left to right. Yeah, for number two, I want it to move from you know, from the right to left, on and on like that. So I'm going to select all three of them. I'm going to press P for position. I'm going to create a keyframe here. And after that, two seconds, another keyframe. So for things like the first one and the second one, I'm going to let them come from behind. So I can just drag them behind like this then for things like the third one i could just drag it behind um you know all the way out so the last thing i'll do is easy again and now if i press Shift. If I press um, play, it will come in one after the other, like that, right? Um, so if I want to add anything else, I could just add this confetti loop. So it's um uh, let me let me just scale it up. I could just add this confetti loop to it. And since so in total, if we look at the animation that we've created, this is this is how that looks. Yeah, this is something that could take less than um 10 to 15 minutes, you know, just to animate. But in terms of payment, in terms of salary, a motion designer gets typically paid uh similarly better than a a brand designer in some cases. Yeah, because all they are doing is leaving the animation being static. People come, emotion designer comes in and adds, um, you know, flair and life to it. So I'm about to leave here and go back to the first, the, the slides that we had. Does anybody have any comments, questions, issues, or anything like that? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So, in the absence of any question, yeah. So, so something like this, you just you typically just go to exports at uh, media encoder queue. 
and um, I'm going to export it out for everyone to see so that it will be to pass as a completed animation. Just give it a second. It's okay. Let's go back to present soon. Let me see if this is done. Oh, mistake. Let me, um, give me one second. It's just a two. All right. So I'm rendering it out. Um, I would so let's go back to present. All right, so this is between between these two, um, this static and this animated, yeah? Which one is likely to catch your eye? Or which one is likely to make you like look back at it? I know if you will, some of them even have like, um, music attached to it of which you know once you hear that music you just stop you know listen to what they are they are saying so you gotta go um, like like hey oh okay 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 uh wait my words float on the sun my thoughts swimming around yeah wait for the um motion design is is used you know for marketing campaigns social media content product branding like the one that i have here on the right um mtn global com all the telecommunications all the fintechs all the all the industries they all use um motion design to to pass across their message um user interface UX design, product design, some of some of which is like probably like the hottest things going on for for companies right now. Um also requires you know motion design. Then film, music, TV, um, you know, uh, one of those music videos, you start seeing some VFX shots in them, you know. All of that is, you know, requires motion design. It is even to a degree AI proof because there are certain um, things that cannot be done. Like you could do a template for it. There are lots and lots of templates. But when it comes to creating custom-based animation, it's it is very difficult for AI to create some of that custom-based. They could do some things, you know, over time. You can never tell. But... Um, it, it, motion design is something that is future proof is the word I like to you know use for it so um in conclusion um everywhere you go in all the in all the industries in life there is also there's always you know motion design and even if you personally do not want to get into motion design, like you feel like maybe it is a bit too difficult for you or you've passed the stage where you feel like you can learn, you should look for ways to get your younger brother into it, your younger sister into it, um, another person 
that's in you know if you look for ways to get on it's just like coding yeah but for the creative department or for the creative side of things because trust me the the salary range for motion designs for motion designers is is very large you can use compared to a video editor who require who needs to like go over to some places and make shoot some videos and all that you could stay in your house and work for companies i've stayed in my house and work for companies in the uk the us in all all over the world basically um if you had to compete with a if for any reason you had to compete with a product designer you know um you creating product designs and animating it has way more um impact than you just um creating static product designs you even if i'm competing with a brand designer i would always be chosen because i have way more i have additional skills than a regular brand designer so with these few points of mine i hope i've been able to convince you not confuse you that motion design is an investment into your future and learning it will open doors to a world of possibilities for yourself thank you so much for listening the end Thank you so much, Mr. Michael. We are very, 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 very grateful. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it was very clean. It was clear. And of course, the, even the presentation itself was beautiful. So we already know what we are in for. Please, so please, do, does anyone have any question for our facilitator before he takes his leave? Does anyone have any question? I hi shots, Brainia Graphics, John Lola Mobola, Chibweze, Ola Dipo. Does anyone have any question for our facilitator? Um, All right. It seems no one has question for our facilitator. So thank you so much, Mr. Michael. Thank you for joining. And uh, we hope to see you soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we hope to see you soon again. So please kindly make me the host so that I can hand the recording and also end the meeting. Okay, I'm trying to do that. Um, give me one second. um the the thing for the hosts okay let's see sorry sorry i didn't get that um just give me a second i'm trying to okay to make me host yeah i'm trying to make you host all right all right um... All right, um, done. All right, thank you so much everyone for joining and we hope that you have an amazing time tonight. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, yeah, bye Michael, bye everyone.